Hey guys, it's Pam. Welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, I just went through and did a ton of inventory management. I either upgraded people's armor or made sure they all had arms and legs as much as I could to go with their armor. I upgraded weapons and, and all, all kinds of fun stuff. So now that that's taken care of, which was a load off my mind, what I'm going to do now is my first judgment. Impressive, is it not? Fit for a leader, meant to show influence and the burden of it. It is where the Inquisition will sit in judgment. Where you will sit in judgment. Who will I be judging exactly? Those who have done wrong. You will know of them, at the very least. All this presumes they have survived their initial encounter with you, of course. Still more lives in my hands. You are a beacon of law, Inquisitor, as others retreat from responsibility. But this needn't be bloody. The Inquisition's sovereignty is derived from the allies who validate it. You are both empowered and bound. Justice has many tools. If their application is clever, execution may even seem merciful by comparison. Is there anyone I should judge? Take the throne when you're ready. We will bring him before you. This was a surprise. After you return from the bogs, we discovered this man attacking. The building. With a... goat. <laughs> Chief Mavran the Under. He feels slighted by the killing of his Avar tribesmen, who repeatedly attacked you first. What should we do with him? Where should he go? I love this one. I absolutely love this one. You answered the death of your clan with a goat. <laughs> a courtroom? Unnecessary. You killed my idiot son, and I answered, as is my custom, by smacking your holdings with goat's blood. Don't look at me. <laughs> no foul. He meant to murder Tevinters. ...that got feisty with your Inquisition. A red-headed mother guarantees a brat. Do as you've earned, Inquisitor. My clan yields. My remaining boys have brains still in their heads. I love that he is not, like... Uh, ...you know, shown as some kind of, like, idiot or dumb savage or whatever. He's very, uh... Um, ...well-spoken, you know, for someone who's covered in mud it seems our conflict was accidental chief Mofran, but it can't be repeated i banish you and your clan with as many weapons as you can carry to tevinter <laughs> my idiot boy got us something after all <laughs> and everybody approves i think this may be a first I really wasn't expecting that one. I mean, you get that one after you do the fellow Meyer, but uh, because that's the father of the guy that you killed, the one who challenged you and, and kidnapped Inquisition agents, which is the whole reason you went there in the first place. But I love doing that because then you would get yourself an agent. And then this should be uh, Alexius. You recall Gerion Alexius of the Winter. Ferelden has given him to us as an acknowledgement of your aid. The formal charges are apostasy, attempted enslavement, and attempt in assassination, on your own life, no less. Tevinter has disowned and stripped him of his rank. You may judge the former magister as you see fit. I remember what would have happened to Thedas if his treachery had succeeded. I couldn't save my son. Do you think my fate matters to me? Will you offer nothing more in your defense? You've won nothing. The people you saved, the acclaim you've gathered. You'll lose it all in the storm to come. Render your judgment, 
Inquisitor. I don't generally like to go for execution, and I kind of like the justice of. You this swore one. to the mages you'd help them. I will have you uphold that promise. Fiona will take charge of you. Any knowledge, favor, or coin you own will go towards the mage's future. A headsman would have been kinder. And that's what Josephine was talking about with being clever. There's only one that I actually am happy to do the execution on. We'll run into him later. Okay, so since I haven't talked to people in a while, especially since we came back to Skyhold, aside from, you know, Dorian. And I'm going to go talk to Dorian in a bit because I do want to start that quest. Um, we're going to come up here and, oh, there's some of the, the mosaic tiles. They're not really that easy to see, you know, because of the light, but you get a glimpse of what is going to come out of them. And there's some of the others that I've gathered, which are actually all on the same line. That's kind of nice. I can't go all the way over there yet. These, this area is still blocked off. There's more construction reports. Um, but first, I want to talk to Vivian. Yes? I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? You must have an opinion of the Templars after living so long in the Circle. Having opinions about Templars, my dear, is exactly like having opinions about mages or Navarans or men. I have known some who were impossible to endure and some who were utterly charming. I have suffered insults at the hands of those in the armor that no more than I endured from nobles or tradesmen in Val Royale. Personally, I have found the Templars a useful tool, skilled at keeping more unpleasant elements at bay. If the Circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The Circle is an idea, my dear. And an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first Enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the Circle in two. The rebels follow her. The Loyalists follow me. If you lead all the Loyalists, why are you only First Enchanter and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no First Enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. What was it like to live in a circle? My dear, your question is the root of all problems with mages. I cannot tell you. Every circle was different. Their Templars were different, their politics unique. And every person within each tower had an experience of circle life unique to themselves. Some people suffered and some were content, some were cruel, some compassionate and some indifferent. The same is true of people everywhere, in all circumstances, whether they are mages or not. So tell me about your personal experience with the circle. I enjoyed life in the Montsimard Circle, my dear. It was an edifice devoted to knowledge and refinement. And mages need the company of other mages. No one else can truly understand the challenges we face, nor see the world as we do. You must have been under constant supervision, being forced by Templars to live in the tower. Was that hard to endure? My dear, I have a suite in the palace and a wing at my dear Duke Bastien's estate. I've never been forced to live anywhere. Most circles allowed mages to live away from the tower, either on their own or in service to the nobility. All that was required was permission from the first enchanter. Some circles were harsher in their restrictions. Kirkwall was the worst, but it was the exception. Most were quite permissive, perhaps too permissive in retrospect. How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? A failure of perspective that infected circle leadership. Mages lived solely in a world of Templars and mages. They could not even imagine what was beyond the tower walls. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. 
they cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago, to let her spend time gardening. Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? By all means, protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin. But Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels. I think that's all I can talk to her. Well, let's see if I can talk to her yes? some more. I'd like to know more about you, Madame Vivier. Whatever would you like to know. Your accent's not all Asian. Where exactly are you from? I am from the Circle, my dear. One's country of origin rarely matters there. But if you must know, I was born in Wycombe, in the Free Marches. I was sent to the Ostwick Circle, but I transferred to Mont Simard while still an apprentice. I'm curious how a Circle mage winds up a courtier. Nobody winds up at court, my dear. It takes a great deal of effort to arrive there. I caught the eye of Duke Bastien de Ghislaine, an advantageous connection that opened many doors. When the position of Enchanter to the Imperial Court became vacant, I was able to secure it. You're married to the Duke de Ghislaine? <laughs> of course not, my dear. Don't be ridiculous. Marriage is the business of alliance and inheritance. I'm Bastien's mistress. And what does the Duchess de Ghislaine think of this arrangement? We got along quite well. Duchess Nicoline and I used to host musical salons together. She was a great patron of the arts. She passed away from a fever a few years ago. Poor dear. What duties does a court enchanter have? I am tasked with providing assistance to the Empress on arcane matters. Most of my predecessors restricted this to lighting lamps and doing parlor tricks. In such troubled times as these, however, I provide political advice to Her Majesty on the subject of the Mage Rebellion. Do you think that you and I might someday... You and I? Don't be absurd, my dear. Okay, um... Do I want to talk to her anymore? Yes. I don't know. Okay, I don't have any other options. Uh, yeah, she is um, committed to her duke. Even if you wanted to do more than you know, flirt with her, you can't. Let's see. I want to drop off. I do have a few little creature items here. As you can see, we're getting a lot of people that we can't even talk to around here. Um, just kind of nice background decor. But that's another way into this rotunda. I want to talk to Fiona just a little bit, who is not in Greetings, her dotage. Greetings, Inquisitor. That is your title now, yes? I should thank you. The way things ended in Redcliffe, you could have demanded anything you wished. Yet you chose to make us equal partners. I was not expecting that. You rebelled for good reason. I'm pleased to hear you say that, Inquisitor. Huh. 
I've been a Grey Warden, Grand Enchanter, leader of a rebellion, and now I am none of those things. Odd where fate takes you, as you're no doubt well aware. I trust everything is well with the mages. There have been a few scuffles with your Templars, but overall it is going well. You were once a Grey Warden. Mine is an unusual circumstance, Inquisitor. Normally one is part of the Order until death, but long ago I found myself stripped of what made me a Warden. They tried to reinitiate me, but nothing worked. Nor could they figure out how it happened. So I was sent to the Circle of Magi, the first Warden ever to be kicked out. <laughs> Quite the achievement. You sound happy about it. Becoming a Warden seemed like a dream when I was first conscripted. Towards the end, however, my brothers and sisters, they felt I had somehow cheated death. I was glad to leave. It also made me unique in the Circle. I had an opportunity to do more than I ever could as a Warden. You mean you began the Mage Rebellion? I pushed for our vote to free the Circles of Magi. But I cannot claim sole responsibility for what followed. Still, despite all the chaos, I would do it again. What happened had to happen. You're not still the Grand Enchanter, then? Any claim I had to the title ended along with the Circles of Magi, although some still call me by it. Perhaps the Circles will one day be resurrected. If so, another will take the position. Until that time, I lead my fellow mages by default. I will do what I can for them. You believe they'll recreate the Circle of Magi after all this? It depends on who the next Divine is, and what she offers. We can't go back to the way things were. But endless warfare benefits no one. That is why I agreed to Justinia's conclave. There must be another solution. I've been meaning to ask, how exactly did the Venatori take control in Redcliffe? Mages constantly found their way to us while we were there. Stragglers, most of them strangers. I had no way of knowing some were actually to winter. They spread whispers, encouraged talk of an alliance, and we were desperate. I'm not proud of our choice, but we were certain Templars were coming. It could have ended far worse. I'll leave you to it. Before you go, Inquisitor, a question. In Redcliffe, after we left, did you perhaps speak with King Alistair? Considering who you are? He wasn't in the mood to talk. It's just that I knew his father, Marek, back when I was a warden. You want me to smooth things over with him? Introduce you? No. It's too late for that. I only wanted to know if he was happy. His father had such hopes for him. Don't mind me, Inquisitor. The concerns of an old woman. Nothing more. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure. Another book I didn't read. Something about the veil. I can't resist. I ran into Piona. Seems you have Alexius serving the mages. There's some justice in that after what he did to them. Maybe one day he'll realize it. I'd like to ask you about Tavinta. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. I find it strange that your mages don't rule anything at all. <laughs> Actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that mages don't rule. The Magisterium rules. That magisters are all mages is considered a convenient technicality. What is the Magisterium exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. 
all mages now. It's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinter mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title? I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later. Lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soparati. That's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new Magisters, which means all the families buy madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinter influence, let me tell you. If it's a fiction, that means mages do rule, then. Yes and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do rule, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. More importantly, commoners believe it can. Tevinter legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. Someday my son or my son's son will be a mage. Someday. Four swords don't realize that means he'll be a Quaestor at the arse end of the Hundred Pillars, at best. Being a Quaestor isn't a good thing. I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. Let me ask you something else. Of course. All right, that's all that's... I wanted to know. Fair enough. Um... Dorian, there's a letter you need to see. A letter? Is it a naughty letter? A humorous proposal from some Antivan dowager? Not quite. It's from your father. From my father? I see. And what does Magister Hallward want, pray tell? A meeting. Show me this letter. I know my son? What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinta. You think your father would actually do that? No. Although I wouldn't put it past him. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good at that. If it's not, I send the man back to my father with the message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. But you're correct. They don't care for my choices, nor I for theirs. Because you wouldn't get married. Because you left. That too. Let's go meet this retainer then. I wonder how much my father paid this man to wait around just in case I showed. <sighs> we'll find out soon enough. I would love to, but I'm not going to do this sequence just right yet because it's going to add on to um, the episode. Actually, I think I might just leave the episode here. Um, I'll talk to Solus and then we can go to Redcliffe. And actually, I'm going to take Sarah with me so you can see one of the Red Jenny caches. But for now, I'm going to leave this episode here. Um, we're going to have some more chatty, talky, less fighty ones. And that's okay because I really want to try and, and get more conversations in with these guys. So um, hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.